Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch, well, another rainy day. You know, we went for too long without any kind of precipitation around here. It was getting kind of dry. And then that tropical depression kind of moved in and it's kind of stalled out around us. And so since, um, well, since Thursday, we've been getting rain. Uh, Saturday, we had almost none. So Thursday, Friday, we got rain, and, and then yesterday, and so far today, uh, rain. Nothing severe. I mean, it's it's really, it's slightly more than a drizzle, you know, a steady, you know, rain, but a little bit more than a drizzle. Uh, not complaining because we certainly need it around here, uh, even though, you know, after a while, you kind of, you kind of miss seeing the sun, right? Uh, but the plants sure love it, uh, keeps the dust down, keeps the risk of fires down, so that's all good. Um, the the whole Trump assassination is, I mean, there's more and more news coming out about it. Uh, interesting thing is, is the Trump campaign is saying that the his, that Trump going golfing yesterday was just a spur of the moment thing. That, that was not something that was planned. They just, you know, he just decided, hey, you know, I, I wanna go golfing, I live on a golf course. And so there's a lot of questions of, well, how did this guy know? You know who is leaking information? Um, there are unsubstantiated, uh, you know, unconfirmed reports uh, that there are people within the, the government leaking information that, that the, the FBI and the Homeland Security are the ones that are doing this, leaking this. And I'm sure no one would be surprised if that, you know, was ever to be proven. Uh, but this guy that they say, and of course this is all allegedly, but the guy that they're saying did this, um, this attempt, he is far left liberal. Um, he was working for the Ukrainian government trying to recruit uh, Americans to go fight in Ukraine. Uh, it, it's, it does, it's got CIA written all over it, but hey, I'm, I'm not making any accusations. I'm just, you know, giving my opinion. I don't know, I was thinking yesterday and I didn't do the research, it was just trying to think from memory. I can't think of any other presidential candidate that's had two attempted assassinations um, during their campaign. Maybe there is, but I'm, I'm not aware of it. Is this over? I mean, we got 50 days now, 51 days, whatever it is. Uh, still could have another one. Uh, and I don't think that they're done yet. And the, the leaked information that I spoke of uh, was saying that the the goal is is to either is to try to take him out, be, and if they can't, then uh, they will try to start World War III with Russia. Now, I mean that sounds far fetched, but any day, you know any more these days everything is far fetched, so I wouldn't put it past anyone. Also, in other news. Uh, the caught one of the colleges state colleges in Springfield, Ohio Has decided to shut down its doors close its doors permanently and go to virtual uh, classrooms only due to the increased level of violence and threats uh, This is not the only time that this happened. There's a uh, you know Elementary and high schools in that area that are doing similar things They're either shutting down permanently or shutting down for lengths of time Due to violence, uh, there's there's rumors and talk of this potentially happening in other areas where there are uh, an increased level of, of immigrants, uh, illegals, because of the amount of violence. Um, <clears throat> a lot of stores have been closing down, and they've been closing down for quite a while. But you know, like your pharmacies, your CVS, your Walgreens, your Rite Aids. You know things like that there a lot of them are closing stores and you could say well some of it is economic um, I think big lots the other day announced that they were going bankrupt and, and shutting down a lot of stores but if you start to dig into it it's not just that they're not making money it's not just that the economy is slowing down and they're not making money a lot of it also is is the amount of money they're losing from theft uh, from shoplifting most big stores have always incorporated into their their budgets you know that there's going to be a certain amount of shoplifting happen and so they absorb that 
<clears throat> actually you absorb that I absorb that when we're, we're buying stuff you know that some part of that price it's figured in the amount of ship shoplifting that will happen well the shoplifting has gotten to a rate that's just never seen before and it's not just illegals that's doing it uh, it's just general violence and crime in areas that, that this is happening but illegals are definitely contributing to a lot of this there's evidence of that and so Again, it's another sign uh, that our society is crumbling. When stores, retail stores, when pharmacies, when um, you know various other types of businesses are having to shut down because the levels of crime. If you look in areas, kind of hotbed areas of crime um, in certain cities, businesses they're almost ghost towns when it comes to businesses businesses all over they're shutting down because of the amount of crime and violence uh, that's happening in their stores they, they can't do business anymore and so I, I I believe strongly that this is another sign showing that our society is crumbling um, I, I would think that at any point in human history that you could find something similar comparable happening it would be a sign that things are falling apart. Um, is, is it falling apart like in some movie to where uh, the government's no longer going to exist and it's just going to be some anarchy apocalypse? Or Probably not. It's probably going to be uh, the other type of dystopian movies where, um, you know, there is big government controlling, but it only controls certain interests. And the rest of the world, the rest of the country, is just this hellhole dystopian you know crime ridden uh, society this is this is already happening in a lot of cities um, I mean you don't have to be a genius you don't have to spend hours of research to find that and then I also have a lot of people uh, contacting me sending me emails uh, let me know what's going on um, someone did send me an email yesterday and uh, it's a news article in one of their local papers talking about how uh, ICE has been declaring several other um, uh, sanctuary cities for illegals and this information is being posted online and while the article didn't list all of them it listed a significant amount of them and some of these counties and cities they're not your typical big ones uh, this particular newspaper was out of Nebraska um, not a big population not a lot of big cities there and it listed like I think 21 counties in Nebraska that would be considered sanctuary counties. And it's happening all over. Uh, there are something like 170 new uh, areas in the country, whether they're cities or counties, that are being declared uh, as sanctuary areas for illegals. And um, they're, they're releasing this information on websites so that these illegals that are coming up, you know, they see that these are the areas to go to because they're sanctuary areas and what they're finding out that is it's, it's not so much that a lot of times the local government isn't actually declaring this sometimes they are but most of the time it's not like the county commission or the city council or whatever is making some declaration some kind of vote that oh we're going to be a sanctuary area it's the federal government saying that these are sanctuary areas that we're going to leave you alone in yeah that's what's happening and so the, the in, in fact in this news article um it actually talked about one particular county in nebraska again it was a nebraska newspaper and they had interviewed the county commission i think is what it was and they're like hey we have no idea what they're talking about like we're, we're we haven't said or done anything to to indicate that we're a sanctuary county this is something that the feds are doing that they are declaring this and they're posting this information online so that illegals can see that, oh, these are areas that we can go to and live and not be messed with. And, you know, the local law enforcement, you could say, well, why doesn't the sheriff arrest him? What is he going to do with him? You know, you arrest him, you put him in jail. And what else? Uh, I mean, you can try to try them for local, you know, for some type of local crime, but the amount of them, you're just going to fill up your jail. You have an overpopulation or jail. You can't just arrest them and then turn them over to the feds because the feds are saying, nope, that's a sanctuary area. We're not doing anything. 
and it's unlikely um, that most of these counties would have the money to deport them themselves. And even if they did, uh, the federal government has indicated that, that the only ones that can deport illegals is the federal government. So I would think that there would be some um, legal problems that the county would get into. So in other words, they've, they've painted them to, into a corner. You know, you, you can only arrest so many people. Most of these counties, unless they're just really big counties, they don't have a lot of jail space. You know, and they already have their regular criminals, the regular people that they're arresting. And in fact, it mentioned in, in one of these, uh, this article that there's this one jail that it's, it's packed. They, they, they can't take anymore and they can't, now they don't have room for the regular local crimes. And so what do they do? You know, just ignore the fact that these people are illegal and let them be on the street. Um, the government is purposely putting communities into a corner. They're doing this on purpose. This is not just, oh, we don't know what to do. Let's do this. This this is a pur has a purpose, and it's to destroy communities all across America. And we have to be ready for this. You have to be getting yourself geared up. I encourage you to to get involved in your local county commission, your local city council, even for especially for your rural people. Um, a lot of times in the rural parts of the country. People don't even know when, where the local government meets and talks and everything. Um, and you know, get to know your sheriff, get to know your county commissioners or, or whatever type of government you have there. And let them know that this cannot happen in your area. Um, because it is happening, it's happening all over the country. And more and more I suspect in the coming weeks and months we will hear more and more stories in different areas of the country where this is in fact happening. So you better be starting to, to prepare. You should have started already, but you better be getting yourselves prepared for this uh, because it is, it, it is at a breaking point and it's gonna start getting pretty rough. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order and to prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.